Repairman said it was the drum. Do you think it's worth getting it fixed, or should we just get a new washing machine? We've got the money, haven't we? Dave, what do you think? It's like talking to a brick wall. Do you have to do that? Huh? Eat like a pig. Mark, eat properly. Every dinner time, it's same. Uh, it's like feeding time at zoo. Yeah, and we all know who the ape is, don't we? Mark, come back here. I don't know why I bother. I'm not hungry. Couldn't you just try a bit harder with him? It seems like you're always picking on him. I'm trying to teach him some manners. You're so soft on him, so I'm always seen as the bad guy. Could you take him to football or something? You know, just make a bit more of an effort. He used to really look forward to Saturdays with his dad. I hate football, you know I do. I've asked him loads of times to come to rugby with me. You don't want to know. I'm going for a lie down. I feel tired. Oh, what's new? It's like you're on another planet half the time. If you're going to nag, I'm going out. Oh, for... If you fancy a game, I've, uh, I've racked them up. Haven't you had enough? Why? I'm just getting a taste. You having a general anaesthetic tomorrow, or had you forgotten? Oh, trust you to remind me. Of course I am forgotten. Chance would be a fine thing. It's on my mind every flipping second of the day. It's not every day you get one of your testicles removed, is it? I know, mate. I know. But you're doing the right thing. Get this operation over with tomorrow and you'll be back on the rugby pitch in no time. Yeah, but... Oof. What if... What if cancer spreads inside my last scan? Don't even think it. Negative vibes, remember? Think positive. Stop being such a wimp, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's what you said when you made me ask Linda Connors out for a date. Oh, I remember her. <laughs> Beautiful eyes, really, really big. big. Hands. <laughs> she gave me a black eye. Hey, I could well do without mates like you. Oh, yes. Hope you're keeping score. What if it is bad news tomorrow? And what if I leave here and get run over by a bus? Now you're being daft. Buses don't run past here. That's Connie. She's all right. She, uh... She doesn't know anything about it. And which bit doesn't she know exactly? Any of it. Not the lump, not the operation, nor the specialist. You're kidding. You're mad. Thanks. In sickness and in health, remember, she's got every right to know. Yeah, and I've got every right to keep it to myself. And that's the way I want it to stay. And you've just potted one of my balls. Dave? Mm. I'm sorry about dinner time. Oh, to me, it should be apologising. Especially to Mark. I love. Another headache? What? You heard. I can count the number of times we've made love in the past three months on one hand. Here we go again. And where did you go storming off to earlier, eh? And someone to see, did you? What are you dreaming up now? We've been married less than a year and you can't stand the sight of me. You can hardly bear to be in the same room. I'm a bit run down, that's all. It's my age, isn't it? You can't even pretend to fancy me. Am I that much of a turn-off? When are you going to get it into your head? It's not to do with you. This is to do with me and no one else. See you later, Mum. Mark, do you fancy going to a football match on Saturday? No, thanks. Bye, Mum. Bye, love. What are you doing with that? Oh, a mate of mine had a spare ticket for a rugby match the weekend, so he gave it to me. I know I should have mentioned it before, but I forgot. What about work? Well, it's OK. I've called in. There's no problem. 
Do some leave. What about me? I know I should have mentioned it before, but I only decided I wanted to go this morning. Oh, must be nice to be a free agent. Oh, it's only a few days. We could do with not being in each other's faces for a while. We could both do with a break. Who is she? Who? The woman you're going with. There isn't a woman, any woman. Please, don't give me hard time over this. Hard time? I'm the one who's having a hard time. You're the one that's going to be off, getting legless with your mates or sleeping with some tart. Look, I am going to be stuck here, wondering what you're getting up to. But don't you worry about me. Not that you plan to, anyway. Any letters of overwhelming gratitude from any of my patients? No, but Simpsons have sent you some samples of their new corn plaster with built-in freshener. Mmm. Nice. <laughs> Shouldn't you be at the hospital? Can I have a word? I don't think I can handle it. I don't want to go. I mean, what if it all goes wrong? What do you want to do, then? Pretend like it's not happening? That would be clever, wouldn't it? Look, mate, if it was me, I'd have exactly the same fears. But you've got to face this one head on. It won't go away on its own. Have you told Connie yet? I can't. Why not? She won't be able to cope. I know she won't. Women are brilliant at dealing with situations like this. <laughs> Seriously. Weaker sex. Don't you believe it? I'm not so sure. I saw what she went through when her first husband died. I, I couldn't risk putting her through that again. No, I'll... I'll do it alone. And if I get the all clear, then I've saved her the upset. If I don't get the all clear, then... I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. You're mad. Promise me you won't tell her. Rana? Yeah, I promise. Besides, I'm not allowed. You're my patient, remember? Finished? Yeah. Your next of kin should be in that space, not your GP. Yeah, I know, but that's how I want it. Not a problem with that, is there? No, not at all. You try and get some rest. I hate wasting your time. I, I can't even point to where it hurts. It, it's just a feel. <laughs> You're so whoa, whoa, whoa. You're so... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> First, you are not wasting my time. So I can help you. Well, you could give me something to help me sleep. I just want to go to bed and not wake up for a long time. And that would solve the problem, would it? Maybe. How long have you been feeling like this? A couple of months. Everything's gone so wrong. It must be my fault. Dave used to be so... You know I remarried, don't you? Mm -hmm. I'm obviously just not meant to be happy. Oh, that's nonsense. Did Stephen die then? Well, I can give you the medical reason, but as to why it should happen, well, I wish I knew. Why is Dave making you so unhappy? He's found someone else. Younger, probably. Well, she's bound to be, isn't she? He just married me because he felt sorry for me, and now he realizes what a big mistake he's made. Look, Connie, uh, I think you need to talk with someone who is qualified to deal with this sort of problem. There you go. Oh, no, I, I couldn't see a stranger. I couldn't handle sitting there pouring out my problems to somebody I don't know. Look, maybe their not knowing you would be an advantage. If you want to save your marriage, Connie, at least consider it, eh? Is that it? Is that the best you can come up with? Well, maybe it's the best for both of you. Can't you just give me a prescription? Something to calm me down, some Valium or something? We need to find the cause. And no drug's gonna do that. Right. Well, thanks. No, Connie. Connie, wait, please. Bye, Connie. What? Mrs. Lester, is she all right? Uh, no, not really. Why, do you know her? Uh, her husband's a friend of mine, just a bit concerned, that's all. Well, I've known Connie for a very long time, and strictly between you and me, her husband's given her a lot of grief. Oh, so he's told her. About the affair? No, she worked it out for herself. He's not having an affair. Rana, I don't want to know. It is none of my business, or yours for that matter. 
I just hope she isn't going to spiral into deep depression again. She's only just getting over the loss of her first husband. Uh, Mac. What? This is Parker's on the line. She wants to know how long you're going to be. She's got to go out. Out? Why the hell am I visiting if she's fit enough to go out? What would you do? Nothing. So you just sit back and watch your mate's marriage disintegrate? I'm sure it won't come to that. That's not answering my question. You'd be breaking patient confidentiality. You don't have a choice. Don't I? No. I could just tell her he's not having an affair. <laughs> and she'd believe you just like that. But I could. Dave has made his decision. He should be allowed to deal with his illness in his own way. It's his life, not yours. Right then, Dave. I suppose you play rugby with him. Uh, no, squash. Maybe I should take up a sport. I'd get to see more of him then. Anyway, he's away. I'm not sure when he'll be back. Uh, it's you I wanted to see. Has Dave sent you? He's not coming back, is he? He sent you Connie, to do. Dave's in hospital. You're sure it's cancer? Yep. He's not even 30. Cancer can strike at any age. It doesn't discriminate. How long's he known? He came to see me at the surgery about three weeks ago. That's when he first found the lump. Why's he kept it to himself all this time? I've already said more than I should. What happens now? They'll remove the testicle. Uh, blood tests and a CT scan will be carried out to see if the disease has spread. And once we know what we're dealing with, we'll take it from there. But we've caught it early. And the signs are really good. And Dave's done everything he should have. Apart from tell me. My first husband went to hospital for a checkup. Wasn't feeling too good. The doctor said he was suffering from panic attacks. Three weeks later, he was dead of a massive heart attack. So excuse me for not sharing your optimism. I'm afraid I don't have much faith in the medical profession. Will you be going to see him? I think that's my business, don't you? Hi, do you want some? Yeah, why not? Two sugars. No, make it three. Oh, like that, is it? Yep, very much so. Why do I bother? Why do I waste my time trying to square circles? So how's your friend? Oh, I spoke to the staff nurse. He's doing fine. So, why the long face? I think I've done something really stupid. <sighs> Tell me it's not what I think it is. Mum? You all right? Do you want some tea? Yeah, yeah, thanks, love. What's wrong? I hate it when you've been crying. It's him. He lied to me. Dave? Why didn't he tell me? I don't understand. What are you going on about? Oh, look, it's nothing for you to worry about, love. Why don't you go and put that kettle on, eh? Thanks for picking me up, mate. I'm glad to be out of this place. Three days of hospital food's enough for any man. I'm really pleased the operation went well. Not as pleased as I am. Did you have any visitors? Well, how could I? Apart from you. No one knew I was there. Still not changed your mind about telling Connie, then? Why would I? Hope's over. The surgeon says he's after. Maybe with any luck, I can just get on with the rest of my life now. He shouldn't have told you. Yeah, well, I'm glad he did. Now I know what a liar you are. I did it to protect you. Why else would I keep something like this to myself? What is the point of being married to somebody if you just shut them out? 
when the specialist said it were cancer. From that moment on, I, I couldn't think of anything else. It was on my mind every minute of every day. All I wanted to do was save you the same anxiety I've been through. Yeah, well, you didn't do a very good job, did you? I've been going through hell here. I thought you had another woman. I'm sorry. When would you have told me, Dave? Well, you wouldn't, would you? I had to find out from someone else. Oh, so it's all right, then? Dave's not having an affair. He's only got cancer. Yeah. Well, actually, it was a relief. It was a relief to know the truth. So where do we go from here? Nowhere. Indigo, I reckon. Yeah. Why? Why'd you do it? Let's talk in my room. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for it to turn out like this. I was trying to help. I trusted you. I know I shouldn't have done it. But you were stupid keeping Connie in the dark. If it had been me, I'd have wanted all the support I could get. But it wasn't you, was it? Connie knew something was going on. You were so busy trying to keep her in the dark that you failed to see the state she was getting herself You're pushing into. pushing it now. You didn't tell anyone. Not even your family. Why not? Was it because of what you were going to have done? Did you think people were going to think you were less of a man? You just didn't want to stop, do you? Do you realise what you've done? You've destroyed my marriage! Because of you, she don't want to know! She's thrown me out! Thanks to you, my marriage is over! Well, I'll tell you something else. I'm not letting you get away with it. I'm making a complaint against you. Who do I need to see? Mac and his three there. Again, it must be bad. A little bird told me David Lester was making a fuss and reception earlier. Pretty strung out by all accounts. That little bird's name wouldn't be Joe by any chance, would it? So what happened? He's after blood. Mine. I know, I know. Before you told me, I told you so. I should never have been to see Connie. So how did Dave leave it? Well. He's in with Mac now. You told Dr. Mystery you didn't want your wife to know about your illness. That's correct. Well, could she have found out any other way? No one else knew. Rana went round to my house while I was still in hospital. What gives him the right to go around disregarding patients' wishes? That's what I'd like to know. Well, why didn't you tell her? You should know. Well, you saw her often enough after her first husband died. When I first met her, she was a complete wreck. She'd go into deep depressions for weeks on end. When she met me, she thought she was marrying some big, strong bloke who could protect her, who'd look after her. How do you think she'd react if out of the blue I suddenly said, oh, by the way, Connie, I've, uh, I've got testicular cancer? Well, none of us can help being ill, can we? I know. But why should Connie have to suffer because of it? Now she wants nothing more to do with me. If Rana had kept his mouth shut, I could have talked around. I know I could. So what are you going to do about it, eh? I'll talk to Dr. Mystery. We'll write to you within 10 days explaining his actions, and if you're not satisfied... Which I won't be. Well, then you can talk to the local health authority. They'll investigate the complaint and a formal hearing will take place. What then? Well, they'll inform you of their decision. Look, you could go directly to the General Medical Council, but if you decide to take that route, you prepare yourself for a long wait before your case is heard. Whatever it takes. My room, 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Helen, you got a minute? Yeah. For the first time in two years, Kate has a few days off and I get lumbered with this little gem. Well, how serious is he, Mr Lester? Do you think he'll go all the way or is there a chance of him calming down and withdrawing the complaint? He is very upset and he is very angry. God, he's very upset. No knowing how far he'll take it. What the hell was Rana trying to achieve? I'm sure he had his reasons. We've all been there. And we've all learned to keep quiet. Well, I've slipped up before. Home visits, for instance. You just naturally assume the patient's partner's in possession of all the facts. Helen, this is different. Rana deliberately told her. I hate to say this, but Mr Lester has a valid complaint. So you think Rana deserves to incur the wrath of the LHA? No, of course not. But our loyalties lie with the patients, first and last. 
Look, if they can't trust their doctors... You look like an expectant father. This isn't funny. No one's laughing. You know what annoys me the most? I've got no one to blame but myself. What if I get kicked out? You should stop thinking the worst. But it could happen, couldn't it? My future's in the balance because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Listen, just give it time. This could all blow over. Rana, come in. Make yourself comfortable. And then tell me what possessed you to break patient confidentiality. At the time, it seemed like the right thing to do. It can never be the right thing to do. He's not only your patient, he's also your friend. You often betray the trust of your friends, do you? Or only those who happen to be patients? That isn't fair, Mac. I'll tell you what isn't fair. It isn't fair when a good doctor gets struck off because he can't stop himself from spilling the beans about one of his friends. It wasn't like that. When you told me that Connie suspected Dave of having an affair, I had to do something. She had a right to know the truth, and he needed her support. And you thought, by putting her in the picture, that she would rush round to the hospital, fling her arms round him, and they would both have a good laugh about how silly they'd been? Living happily ever after, celebrating their good fortune in having a friend like you. Mac, don't shout me down, but I'd really like to see Connie again. Try and talk to her. You're an idiot, Rana. You really think I'm going to let you lose on one of my patients when her husband's just made a formal complaint against you? It can't get any worse for me. But it can for the practice. <sighs> what good do you think it'll do? My neck's on the line. A complaint like this could be hanging around for years, and the longer it takes, the worse it's going to get. If I don't try and sort it out now, it could finish me. Should have minded my own business. Why did he lie to me? To save you from worrying. How can you be in a proper relationship with someone if they won't even tell you they're ill? This is his way of dealing with it. Well, it's not mine. Mark's dad only died three years ago. Who knows how long Dave's got, and I do not want to put my son through that again. He's just going to go through life thinking everyone he loves dies, and it's not fair on him. No. It's better this way. How can you write off Dave like that? The operation was a success, and the prognosis is really good, and there's over a 90% chance that he'll fully recover. Connie, he needs you. You do love him, don't you? Why not give him a second chance? I'm no use to anyone, least of all Dave. I think maybe it's time you left. Your friends. Your friends don't have to babysit their mums. Don't you think I've got enough on my plate without you acting up? It's always you, you, you. You're always on about yourself. It's Dave you should feel sorry for. He's the one that's ill, not you. God, if I'd have spoken to my mum like that, I got clipped round. Well, go on then. If it makes you feel better. Please don't cry. It's not true what you said about me. Dave's going to be OK. I heard what the doctor said. He's not going to die like Dad did. Just talk to him, Mum. Please. Can I get you a drink? 
No thanks, I'm cutting it out for a while. How's Mark? He's fine. Wants to know if you can still take him to football on Saturday. Yeah, of course. Perhaps you could uh, pop over and have your supper afterwards. That would be nice. How are you? Not too bad. Do you have to go back to the hospital? Aye. Uh, next week for my results. Would you like me to go with you? If that's okay with you. I'll see you Saturday. Thanks for earlier. Oh, you don't have to thank me. I messed up. I think I do. You better buy him another drink. Looks like he could do with one. What do you want? To apologize and to ask you to think about withdrawing your complaint. And why would I do that? Because I'm sorry that I betrayed your trust and if you're going to punch me, please, not the face. You never could take a punch. Drink. <laughs> Boys at the club had it made up. One of their sons is in the same class as Mark. Seems like everyone knows now. Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I know. Thanks, mate. 